I do love the gurgle of a, of a triple. Gurgle, 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 gurgle. Sounds like a little turkey under me. I am very impressed with this bike. They did a really good job, but... Hey everybody, it's Dick here. Today I'm riding the all new Triumph Tiger 900 Rally Pro. The Rally Pro is a liquid cooled 12 valve dual overhead cam inline three cylinder engine. It has bifurcated radiators, which makes the bike slimmer. It has inverted adjustable electronic suspension by Showa with 9.5 inches of travel up front and 9.1 inches of travel in the rear. It has LED front and rear lights. The Rally Pro comes with auxiliary fog lights. It has 320 millimeter dual discs with rapidly mounted Brembo Stylma four piston monoblock calipers. The Rally Pro comes kitted with a bash plate, engine guards, and a center stand. It has an adjustable 33.5 to 43.3 inch seat height, has a 5.5 gallon fuel tank. The new TFT display comes with six rider modes, including rider configurable mode and off-road pro. The control switches are borrowed from the Scrambler 1200 with the addition of switches for cruise control and heated seats. The Tiger 900 sports a new steel trellis frame with a bolt-on aluminum subframe and bolt-on removable passenger pegs. The rear brake is a 254mm disc rake, one piston, monoblock Brembo caliper. ABS and cornering ABS on the GT, GT Pro, Rally, and Rally Pro. It's chain driven, six speed wet multi plate clutch with the Triumph version of a slipper clutch. The GT Pro and the Rally Pro also feature Triumph's new shift assist, which is essentially a quick shifter and blipper. Let's take it for a ride. My big problem with the scramblers is how heavy they were and how hard they were to move around and I always think that adventure bikes should be relatively light this is really easy to get off the stand it's in gear right now and one of the other things too is the drag when you pull in the clutch oh interesting cable clutch but look at how easily this rolls and it's so easy to move around it's it feels incredibly light I always get worried that there'll be, whenever I move the GS around the driveway, I always get worried that there'll be a lifetime of when I'm gonna have to give it away or sell it because I won't be able to move it around the driveway. <laughs> this might be the answer. Is that, oh, that's a seat. The button is under the seat. I wonder if there's, there's gotta be controls up there. There's a button under the seat for heating the seat here. I wonder if that's for, isolating the passenger seat. There's a power port here. There's a key that probably let, uh, gets me into under the seat there. I do love this minimal LED front headlamp. I love the fact that there's dual discs on the front. It, I mean, it is very much your, it's what you expect to get from an adventure bike package these days. And it's been riding very, very nicely, actually. This, it's been very smooth in riding. I'm going to try some of the rider modes to see if it uh, changes that throttle response, which it should, but if it changes it negatively or positively. I also like the fact that these are bolt-on, because if you're not taking a passenger and you're not carrying luggage and stuff, it's nice to take those off. Is that? But actually, you might want to keep them on in case you crash, because it's actually a bit of crash protection there. And look at that! Woohoo! Center stand, there's stock, that's usually extra. Okay, Oh, and I could put my leg over it without climbing up on the pegs. Yeesh, people are taller than me who are riding this bike. It's not that tall in the tallest position. I'm kind of on the balls of my feet, definitely it's kind of the same height as the GS. I do like this display. I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of TFT displays, but this display is actually... Oh, interesting engine braking on this. 
do find myself looking down at this display a lot because it's so there's so much information on it. I've been spending the last five minutes standing up on this bike, and this bike is this bike is so nice to ride standing up. I'm trying to remember what it's like to ride Shakedown's Tiger 800 as a comparison. The fueling and and the throttle response on this is a lot smoother than any adventure bike I've ridden. It's actually really quite lovely how how smooth. I can't think of another adjective. And the seating position is good too. Even though it's in the highest setting, I have a great bend in my knee to the pegs. It's a little, they're a little further back than I w would anticipate. So I'm kind of afraid of that triumph knee ache I get from when I'd ride the uh, street cup. I do not like this windshield and the brackets for the windshield and there's so much sculptural shit going on that it's hard for me to look through the windshield without getting kind of distracted by everything that's going on with this windshield. But I do love, it has kind of a BMW, oh, that's interesting. The brake pedal, I don't know if this was dropped. It does have a scratch on the, it does have a scratch on the exhaust pipe. And I'm wondering if maybe whoever dropped it bent the brake pedal in because the brake pedal is, it's hard to find. Yes, yeah, it's, it's hard to find with my foot. I'm, I'm kind of like pinching my toe in to find the brake pedal. This clutch is very light, which I like. Slow speed, feathering the clutch. This thing is so well balanced. Holy crap. Really loving this bike. This seat is very comfortable. A bit wide for me, but I'm not not terribly the bars are wide that's i just noticed that after getting on getting on again i've noticed how wide the bars are i'm going to try changing the mode here i'm now in i'm now in sport mode oh he said what did he say he said first gear 30 miles an hour holy shit <laughs> i just wheelied <laughs> Oh, that was very surprising. There's, you require no technique to wheelie this bike. I think I just broke my wrist. <laughs> Woo! That was, holy crap. This bike is hev a big heavy adventure bike. But first gear, just wheeling like a, a uh, a freaking Grom. Usually you have to bring your revs up on while your clutch is pulled in and then throw your clutch out and then that brings the front wheel up. This thing, first gear, 30 miles an hour, you snap the clutch, you're on the rear wheel. That was really surprising. That took me by surprise because he said it would happen, but man, and even in sport mode, you know, I put it in sport mode to see if it would change the throttle response. It's still really smooth, this throttle, this throttle response. So I'm on road mode right now. I've taken off a of sport mode. Still a, still a smooth throttle. Oh, it's got cruise control. This display, until it becomes intuitive to me, it's very, it's awesome, but so awesome that I, I keep finding myself going back to it. I keep looking at the display. Even on road modes, this is snappy when you want it to be. I wonder what other modes it has. Sport, rain, I keep... The control interface is kind of weird because I keep using the, the turn signals to try and go through the to try and go through the um, the map, uh, the, the TFT display. Rider mode, rain mode, off-road pro, off-road sport. It's, it's very forgiving in its gearing because I just started 
from a very slow defender. I just started from a very slow speed in fourth. I'm getting a little bit ooh, taller, <laughs> taller than I remembered. I'm getting a little pain in the, not in the center of my back between my shoulder blades. And I don't know why it's because I'm reaching so wide on this. I'm in love with this clutch lever, in love with it. It's so compliant. You can, you can use it, two fingers on it. You can feather this clutch. You, all you need to do is pull it into where your fingers are. You can rest it on your fingers. It's, it's just textbook tuning on this clutch. So cruise control on this, heated grips on this, about 35,000 rider modes. Plastic brush guard, so if this falls, those are getting broken. It does have um, some engine guards on it, which is nice to see as standard. It has a rear rack, which is nice to see as standard. There's a couple of buttons that I don't know what they are that are like high up on the instrument cluster that I can't see what they do. What do they do? Oh, heated seat button and fog lights. I'd probably turn the heated seat on when I want to put the fog lights on and not know it until my ass got hot. This is a surprise. I, I didn't think I was in the market for an adventure bike. And I do really love the XE. But I think this is a superior bike to the XE. It's about as high, I think. It has the same, it's the same if not better suspension on it. And it's a lot more rideable. It's not a lot more capable. And I love the bifurcated radiator on it. I don't understand the Batman Japanese, you know, Akira faux tank that they put on all these things. It's really kind of unnecessary. I don't know. It's funny, you have to roll on, roll off, past, off on the throttle to select anything in these rider modes. I'm gonna see if I can try off-road pro. Oh, it turns off traction control and ABS. So that's what Off-Road Pro means. The whole thing just, it's just like, here we go. It was just all warning lights. It was like, ABS is off, traction control is off. There's a triangle with a, it's, it's a lot more aggressive on the throttle response too. Sounds like it got louder, but I don't know if that's just my ears ringing. But there's like so many warnings right now on this light that I'm in off-road pro. Oh, and definitely the, th oh, the throttle response is so much shifting is snappier. I wonder if this is electronic suspension because I feel like I'm dipping, I'm kind of lifting off that front suspension when I accelerate. Huh. This is how motorcycles were in the old days without ABS and traction control. Well, this has a really tall windshield on it and it looks adjustable and it seems to be in its highest adjustment position. And so I have no wind on my helmet whatsoever. And usually when they have windshields like this, they, the wind ducks around it, hits me right in my shoulders. And the wind is actually quite comfortable on my shoulders. So it's not, it's not upsetting at all. This thing is, I'm plunked at 60, I feel like I'm going 40. This thing could cruise all day long. I might, I, if I had bought, if I bought, if I, if I bought one of these, I would probably move the mirrors and the controls in a little bit and, and trim these handlebars down like an inch on either side. Because I do feel like they're a bit wide for my reach. But this thing is, and it's just snappy. I mean, I can go, the suspension is very soft. So when I come off the throttle, I dip, the, the forks dip. But that's the trade-off of having long suspension.
I'm still looking at this stupid display. Should be keeping my eyes on the road. But I turned off the rider. Oh shit. Ha. I turned the heated seat on. Oh no, I turned the passenger heated seat on when I push that bu when I push that button. So the passenger heated seat is on. And then there's a button for the, the rider heated seat. There's a orange wrench that's on the screen. I turned up back to sport mode. Wow, my back really hurts now. I turned it on to sport mode. So I turned back on the ABS and the traction control, but that that triangle with the arrow in it, or that triangle with the explanation point in it is still, is still on the screen. So I don't really know what that means, but again, I'm, I'm getting distracted with this. Can I just say something before we get off the highway, because we're getting off at this exit, about the vibrations on this bike. I'm in sixth gear, I'm at 4,000, 3,900 RPM, 55 miles an hour to six, 60, mi 60 miles an hour, six gear, 4, 000, just shy of 4,000 RPMs. My hands on both of my grips are vibrating like a Royal Enfield. This thing is vibing like nobody's business. And I'm in top gear now, going 60, and it's vibrating at 4,000 RPMs. And I'm, now that I'm noticing the vibrations, I think I was vibrating through most of the gears, and I'm gonna notice on our way back, but I got vibrations in my foot pegs, and I got vibrations in my grips at highway speeds cruising. And this would get very tiresome very quickly if I wanted to take this on a tour. But yeah, I, the, cl the clutch is so smooth, Jesus Christ. It's like butter with a hot knife. It's lovely. But I do not like the vibrations I've noticed. Oh, 3,500 RPM, third gear, 20 mi 29, 30 miles an hour. Still vibrations in the handlebars. That's very weird. That Maybe it's because they're so wide? Yeah, I'm getting a lot more vibrations than I thought. This thing is not as high. I like this thing a lot, other than these vibrations, which comes down to that, I think comes down to that wide handlebar. Think about, you know, I'm all the way out. Look at how far, how far back, how wide I am on my hands. So if there's any vibrations, it's going right out, and, and they taper. They're tapered as well, so there's, there's narrow little tapered ends. But, you know, the vibrations I'm getting is the only negative, yeah, 4,000 RPM every gear. 4,000 RPM every single gear. Jesus, it's vibing. Even the mirrors are starting to vibe a little at that RPM. Red line is 12,000 RPMs. So why am I getting vibrations at 4,000 RPM? Uncomfortable vibrations at 4,000 RPM. I'm gonna see what happens when I rev it out. Oh, Fanny, you should sit on this. 7,000 RPMs. Holy crap. 7,000 RPMs, the whole bike is vibrating. My ass is vibrating. You can see my ass cheeks jiggling if you were behind me right now. I, I'm getting, oh my God, the, the mirrors are vibing. I'm just doing this out of exercise. I'm going, I'm obviously revving it out because I see that the RPM, that the RPMs are, are redlining at 12,000 RPM. So I'm going 6,000 RPMs. It sounds like it's spinning way too high. It says it can rev high and the engine is doing it, but it is not comfortable to rev high. Anywho, the vibrations are, just, are upsetting because this bike was nearly perfect for me. I'm getting some residual heat from the passenger heated seat coming up to the driver's seat, which it's very uncomfortable on a day that's 90 degrees out. Yeah, so if you keep it under 4,000 RPM, the vibrations are fine, this bike's a peach. Anything over 4,000 RPM, you're getting some unusually high, uncomfortable vibrations. 
and as a tourer or a sport tourer I am very impressed with this bike they did a really good job but those vibrations are a deal breaker if my BMW had this clutch and this throttle it would be a perfect bike because I don't have any vibrations on my BMW this yeah this is the vibrations on this are a deal breaker and it's a shame because it's a near near perfect motorcycle I mean just slow speed maneuvering clutch clutch the ease of the clutch the throttle response the rider modes everything about this is near perfect and then you get the 4000 rpms and it tries to rape you into a violent like like molesty a molesty orgasm like it'll give you an orgasm but you're like sad that you had one like you need a shower under like a steel brush is how vibey this is it, it really violates you and the heated seat is uh, would be a wonder on any day but today if you like that video and you want to see more like them hit like share and subscribe.